So as I've said, the Expressive Therapies Continuum is a theoretical and practical structure to understand the ways in which people take in information, organize information once they have it, and process the information or make sense of it and then um, output the information in the art therapy process. The Expressive Therapies Continuum is hierarchical in nature meaning that it is it begins with processing on lower levels and moves through processing on higher or more complex levels. Although it is hierarchical in nature, there's no implication that processing information on one level is more important or better than processing information on other levels. Each person should be able to take in and process information on every level and with every component of the Expressive Therapies Continuum. The Expressive Therapies Continuum is, is, as I said, divided into three levels. The most basic level is the kinesthetic sensory level. Moving up from there, the affective perceptual level. Moving up from there, the cognitive symbolic level. And the creative level overarching all. The two components of the of each level of the Expressive Therapies Continuum are believed to function in a, in a bipolar or bi, yeah, a bipolar relationship with one another. So therefore that means that when functioning on one level, on one component of the level increases, it at first increases functioning on the opposite level and then increases it to a optimal level and then following that continued functioning on one level on one component of the level decreases functioning on the opposite component and then blocks it and I'll go into other um, a description of each level following this and that bi-directional or not bi-directional I'm sorry bipolar relationship is very important in treatment planning um, and, and prescriptions for art therapy um, directives. The two sides of the expressive therapies continuum are believed to represent or roughly represent the two hemispheres or functioning in the two hemispheres of the brain. So therefore those um, functions that are lined up on the left side of the expressive therapies continuum, that is the kinesthetic, perceptual, and cognitive functions are roughly correspondent to functioning on the left side of the brain that's more, or with the left hemisphere of the brain, that is considered more uh, linguistic, logical, um, and, and, and logical. Whereas functioning on the uh, functions on the right side of the expressive therapies continuum, that is the sensory, affective, and symbolic components, are believed to represent functioning on the with the right hemisphere of the brain, functioning that is more visual spatial, emotional, and spiritual. Functioning on with the creative component or the creative level of the ETC is believed to represent integrative functioning with both sides of the brain. The Expressive Therapies Continuum is important in the field of art therapy because it provides a common language for all art therapists. It is, um, it's a way in which art therapists, no matter what their theoretical orientation, whether they be Jungian, cognitive behavioral, or psychoanalytic, regardless of what they believe their, uh, what, what their underlying theoretical orientation is, they can all agree that art does provide or can provide each of these uh, functions or experiences for individuals. No matter what their theoretical orientation, all art therapists know and understand that art provides kinesthetic and sensory stimulation, perceptual and affective stimulation as well, and that it urges and organizes cognitive and symbolic information, and that creative functioning overarches all of that. So the Expressive Therapies Continuum is a way in which all art therapists can communicate with a common language. And it also helps us, no matter what our theoretical orientation, bond together as a group and provide a, 
uh, a way in which we tell others who aren't art therapists or who don't know anything about art therapy, we can explain any function of any therapeutic function of art making and art activity. So now I'll talk a little bit about each of the individual components and their relationships with one another. As I said before, the uh, functioning begins with the functioning begins with the kinesthetic sensory level. That represents the most basic level of functioning in which um, people take in information through their senses and they um, use information or express information through rhythm and movement. This parallels the way in which um, infants through the age of about 18 months take in and process information. The second, uh, and as I said before, this bi-directional relationship means that when someone is processing information with the kinesthetic component, when they're moving rapidly or they're moving, um, it, they're using strong movements and a lot of rhythm, the more that they move, the less likely they are to be able to pay attention to very, very subtle sensitive or sensory information. So at first, movement increases one's ability to feel sensation, but then eventually blocks it. And so that's what I mean by the bi-directional relation, relationship between the two poles of one level. The same is true of sensory functioning. If a person is very centered on feeling and experiencing a certain kind of sensory information, then they will become very still and movement won't be important or highlighted in that experience. Moving up one level, we're at the perceptual affective level of the uh, expressive therapies continuum. The perceptual level focuses on the formal elements in, involved in art making, that is line, shape, color, and form, and the focus on those in, in art expression. The affective level is concerned with the appropriate expression or dis the identification, discrimination, expression, and soothing of emotions. And those two are related as well in that same bipolar way. So when uh, a person is very, very emotional and they're expressing themselves through art in a very emotional way, it's not always likely that form is, pr is predominant in, in the image. So as affect increases, form decreases. And as the opposite, when the attention is on form and perhaps a rigid use of form, then affect decreases. And you could even say that sometimes people can use form in a way to contain affect. Moving up to the next level of the expressive therapies continuum, we're on the cognitive symbolic level. And at this level, the cognitive component of this level has to do with um, problem solving, cause and effect thinking, and all the, all the functions of the, the frontal lobes, and so the executive functioning of the brain. We want to be able to, to delay gratification, engage in complex thought, uh, plan, visual spatial planning. Um, the, the symbolic component of this level is involved with the rich and complex universal and personal symbols that people can create. And finally, the creative level overarches all level and kind of move, it moves down the center, meaning that it integrates functioning from both, both poles of a certain level of the expressive therapies continuum or integrates functioning from all levels of the expressive therapies continuum. So this is just a very, very brief overview that should, I hope, um, complement the reading that you're doing and, and help to guide a little bit your, your future interactions with the um, art therapy, the expressive therapies continuum in your next upcoming assignments. So what you'll be asked to do is make some technique cards that um, in which you're trying to, um, you're trying to design and execute a pure experience with one of the um, one of the components of the expressive therapies continuum 
And in doing this, we're asking you to try to focus on as pure an experience as possible because if you know what to exclude, then it means you know what to include. And then when you're including the certain kinds of stimuli, that means you're really understanding what you're doing. So you're going to be um, thinking of what you can do in the, the kinesthetic realm, the sensory realm, the perceptual, the affective, the cognitive, and symbolic, and how to design experiences that highlight these, um, these components for clients. The reason why you're, you're trying to highlight these components for clients is because when you perform or when you, you uh, first meet clients in therapy, you'll notice over the first few sessions that they have tendencies to use certain kinds of materials, um, pr uh, you, uh, produce certain kinds of, of artwork, and um, as, you t as you read in Chapter 10, you'll learn a little bit about assessment using the Expressive Therapies Continuum. Um, and that assessment involves looking at and studying their preferred medium, their interaction with the art materials, the, the design and design elements of the finished product, and their verbal comments. All of these things give you information about um, where they might be most comfortable operating. That means where they might be most comfortable taking in, organizing, and processing information. It also gives you information about perhaps about what components of the expressive therapies continuum they might avoid. Both information about strong preferences and aversions provide you with directions on direction or directions on where to go in treatment. So therefore if somebody is very comfortable working at the kinesthetic level and they're active and they are engaged in a lot of movement, it's unlikely that they're really thoughtful and so you might say that they're overemphasizing the kinesthetic component and underemphasizing the cognitive component. And knowing this, when you enter into art therapy with a client like this, you would think, hmm, my goal for therapy with this person is to help them de-emphasize a little bit their perhaps over-dependence on the kinesthetic component and increase their ability to use the cognitive component. So beginning with the beginning where they're comfortable and then moving through the expressive therapies continuum to highlight experiences that will give them the freedom to process and use information on any level and with every component of the expressive therapies continuum. This, um, this theoretical orientation to the use of the expressive therapies continuum is really based on Florence, Kane, Florence Kane's original um, research in the 1950s um, she wrote a book called The Artist in Each of Us, and her goal in using art with children was to help open them up so that they could um, use and process information, use and process art media, art making, and other types of information. She wasn't just talking about art making, she was talking about their personality and their social functioning and open them up so that they could function with every level. So that's really what we want to do. Um, in our work with clients in art therapy. So I think right now I'll conclude this short, short introduction to the Expressive Therapies Continuum, and I hope that your further reading will highlight areas that aren't clear right now and that our interactions in future classes will clarify others. Thank you.